The next quality of the Prophet is Wafa. What's Wafa? Loyal. Loyalty. Expand on it. Expand, explain to me what does loyalty mean? Give me an example of loyalty, like someone is loyal to his friends, his family, his people. Give me an example of loyalty, of wafa. Like a lady for her, uh, like her husband who died. One aspect of wafa is for you not to forget the previous favors others have or the previous relationship you've had. Some people forget and they deny. Wafa, one aspect of wafa is to recognize the favors of others. So let's examine some examples of wafa. The first example is al sallallahu Did you know that the Prophet had a sister? She's his sister from suckling, from rada'a. Her name her title is known as Al Shayma. She's the daughter of Al Harith Al Saadi. Do you know who her mother was? Halima Al Saadiya. That's how she would be Al Ukht Al Radaiya for the Prophet. Because remember, Halima Al Saadiya took the Prophet and she nursed him, she breastfed him, and so her daughter would be Mahram to the Prophet because she would be the sister in Radaa. So her name is known as a shayma The hadiths indicate that at the battle of Hunayn, this is when the Prophet was in Medina, there was a village that tried to fight the Prophet. So the Muslims achieved victory. They basically held them as captive, as asir, as prisoners of war. So they brought them to the Prophet. One of those who was enslaved was who? Shayma, this daughter of Halima Sa'diya, she was one of the prisoners of war because in, in her village had basically rebelled against the Prophet. So the Muslims captured them, they took them as captive, they brought them to the Prophet, so the Prophet decides what happens to them. One of those who was held as captive was this woman, Shayma. So basically, she came towards the Prophet as she was being taken, she told the Muslims, shame on you. How dare you enslave a woman who is the sister of your Prophet in Rada'a? They told her, we've never heard that. Is that true? She's like, take me to the Prophet and I'll confirm that. So she went to the Prophet, she told him, Ya Muhammad, Ukhtuka Sabiya. Your sister in Rada'a meaning, she's taken as a captive. Are you okay with that? So basically the Prophet told her, explain to me, who are you? What's this case? She basically tells him, I am the daughter of Halima Sa'diya. Remember when my mother Halima took you from Mecca to our village? I would take care of you. I would carry you because she was a few years older than the Prophet. Sometimes when my mother was away, she was busy, I was the one who would carry you. So she says this to the Prophet The Prophet says, yes, you're right, I do remember that. Then the Prophet took his own cloak, his abaya rida, and he made it like a sheet, a blanket where she could sit on. He told her, sit here. He was showing her a lot of respect. Then the Prophet told her, okay, I give you the option. Either stay with us here, stay with me in Medina and I will take care of you and we'll spend on you, we'll respect you or if you'd like to go back to your village, we'll take you back to your village. She said, no, I want to go back to my village. The Prophet said, that's fine. So he told the Muslims, take her back to your village, Mu'azzaza, Mukarrama, in honor and dignity and the Prophet sent so many gifts to her. By the way, it has been mentioned that this lady, as shayma later after the Prophet, she became a very noble woman, pious woman. She would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once her tribe later 
wanted to leave the religion of Islam, she was instrumental in keeping them as Muslims because she really believed in the message of the Prophet How is this an example of wafa? The Prophet, uh, she, has a she, she was a captive, right? Yeah. The Prophet here did not forget about the past and denied her that past. No, who cares? I was a young kid at that time. The Prophet honored the fact that she would carry him sometimes when, when, she, when he was a child and she was a child. See, that's Wafa, you're loyal. People who served you in the path, in the past, you serve them. Now you forgive them, you give them gifts, you show them respect, that's Wafa. Most leaders would not have done some, something like that. They would even deny it, you know? They would even deny, it. who are you? I don't even know what you're talking about, you're lying. I have a friend, I have a friend. He's a very respected community figure. And Allah has given him wealth. He once told me, that years ago, years ago, someone called him from a country overseas and he told him, I want to go to Hajj. Will you sponsor me? I know you are well off and Alhamdulillah you're uh, having, you know, charitable projects. Give me the money to go to Hajj. He says, I wired him the money. He went to Hajj. Years later, years later, the political situation changes in those countries. This person, this person becomes the prime minister of one of those countries. I won't mention the name. Which person? This person who went to Hajj and he begged for money from my friend, right? My friend lives in Canada, this person. That guy called him. He told him, I want to go to Hajj, give me money. So he wired him the money, he went to Hajj. Years later, that person who went to Hajj became the Prime Minister in one of those countries. Prime Minister, powerful Prime Minister with millions at his disposal. My friend says, my friend in Canada, he says, one day I called him after he became the Prime Minister. <laughs> salam, alaykum as -salam. Remember me from the old days? I'm Furan, I'm so and so. It's like he paused for like 10 seconds. He's like, I, I don't remember you, who are you? I am that person whom you wanted to go to Hajj and I gave you the money to go to Hajj. No, that never, no, no, nothing like that ever happened. He hung up the phone. See, no wafa here. It happens a lot. Happens a lot. Happens, I, I'm sure you all have stories like that. See? This person is a leader of a state, but he has no wafa, no loyalty. And by the way, my friend says, I didn't want anything from him. It's not like I'm trying to use the past, hey, connect me, give me connection. No, I just wanted to say salam to him. How are you? Do you need anything? He just completely denied that he knows him. Not Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The smallest thing that someone did for him, the Prophet recognizes it. That's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. By the way, these people that we're talking about are so-called religious people. And this person is not an atheist that I'm talking about. He prays, he fasts, he, he claims he belongs to an Islamic party. But this is how they react. So that's the problem nowadays. They do the ibadat, they forget of the akhlaq. Exactly. And our Prophet, the main thing, his main mission was akhlaq. His main mission was akhlaq. By the way, this Shayma, she has a beautiful uh, poetry about the Prophet Basically, it's been mentioned that when uh, the Prophet was young in their tribe and Halima Sa'diyah was taking care of him, she would hold the Prophet and she would read these lines of poetry. She would say, Ya Rabbana abqilana Muhammada. Oh Allah, keep Muhammad for us until we see him, you know, Yafi' young and then he grows a little bit older. Then I will see him as a master, as someone who will have a high position. Oh Allah, protect him from his enemies and from Hasad. 
and give him glory that will continue. Subhanallah, when she was young, she read these lines of poetry because they knew the Prophet was special. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa he was loyal. He would not forget about these people who had a favor on him. And this is a lesson for us brothers and sisters. Believe me, in your life, Allah will try you. Show loyalty. You know, one, one area when you do counseling is marital problems. Sometimes the spouses, they fight, there's a problem, there's separation, there's divorce. It gets so nasty, they forget all the good days with each other, all the favors. Okay, you guys, years, some of them you've been living 20 years together. Khalas, just because of this last issue, you forgot all of that. That's why the Holy Quran states, وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Don't forget, you the husband and the wife, don't forget the days that you helped one another, you served one another. That's it, you just erase that? Haram, that's not wafa. Wafa means you recognize the past and you honor the person. Okay, I have a problem with you now, but I will not deny that in the past. We lived together all those hours and months and days that you sacrificed for the marriage. I'm not going to deny that. The person who has, who has no wafa, his, his deen is incomplete. So this is basically uh, a shayma, the daughter of Halima Sa'diya. By the way, we'll conclude with this before, inshallah next, uh, in, in our next class we'll, we'll mention other examples of wafa. Halima Sa'diya had another daughter by the name of Al-Hurra, just to show you how decent her family is. Al-Hurra, the daughter of Halima Sa'diya, she was known for her love for Imam Ali alayhi salam. And basically in one hadith, it mentions that Al-Hurra bint Halima, she went to see Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. You guys know who Al-Hajjaj is? He was one of the most vicious rulers in history, in history. He was a man who sometimes wanted to see a person beheaded, right? Just to see how he dies. Like they would bring somebody who's very muscular, or somebody very skinny, just randomly from the street. Hajjaj would say, kill him in front of you, slaughter him, like just cut off his head. The person says, have I committed a crime? No, what have I done? He's like, I want to see how a muscular person dies. This is, this is Hajjaj, this is Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, bloodthirsty tyrant. Once Al-Hurra, the daughter of Halim al saadiya met him, Quickly, he was savvy, he recognized her. He told her, Anti Hurra bint Halima, your Hurra, the daughter of Halima. Qalat farasatun min ghayri mu'min. She said, You're smart, but you're not a believer. <laughs> because we have a hadith that says the true mu'min is savvy. And the farasa. She told him, You have farasa, but you're not a mu'min. Subhanallah, she was jari'a, she was bold. So basically, Al Hajjaj here summons her. He wants to punish her. He told her, I've heard that you claim Ali ibn Abi Talib is better than Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman. Is that true? I've heard that you favor Imam Ali over these three. Is that true? She said, no, whoever told you that is lying. I don't favor Imam Ali over Umar, Abu Bakr and Uthman. I favor Imam Ali over all the prophets of Allah other than Prophet Muhammad <laughs> Look at look at the audacity subhanallah that she had. Ufadhiluhu ala Adam wa Nuh wa Lut wa Ibrahim wa Dawood wa Sulaiman wa Isa ibn Maryam. I favor Imam Ali over those. You're telling me Umar, Abu Bakr and Uthman, who are they? These great prophets, I say Imam Ali is better than them. Al-Hajjaj tells her, if you don't bring me proof <laughs> for what you said, I'm going to have your head cut off. She says, look, I'm not the one who favored Imam Ali over these prophets. Allah himself, he favored Imam Ali over these prophets. He says, where? Show me the evidence. He's like, okay, let's start one by one. <laughs> As for the first one, Adam, that I mentioned, Allah mentions in the Holy Quran, when He talks about Adam, Allah says, Adam, 
disobeyed his Lord, that wasn't a sin, we've already talked about that before, it wasn't technically a sin but he didn't take Allah's advice, so basically Adam had to kind of stray from the advice of Allah. But when Allah talks about Imam Ali in Surah Al-Insan, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ Allah in the end comments, وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا Allah says, I found what you the Ahlul Bayt Imam Ali and your family did to be very worthy and Allah thanks you for that. Allah says, I thank you for your effort. So which one's greater? Allah says about a person, I thank you for your effort or Allah says about a prophet, he kind of deviated from my advice. فَقَالَ أَحْسَنْتِ يَا حُرَّةِ Okay, that was good, I like that answer. فَبِمَا تُفَضِّلِينَهُ عَلَى نُوحٍ وَلُوطٍ what about Prophet Nuh and Prophet Lut? How is Imam Ali, you know, what, what virtue does he have that they don't have? Allah, she says, Allah says in the Holy Quran about their wives, Allah says the wife of Prophet Nuh and the wife of Prophet Lut, they deviated and they went to hell. Whereas Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, his marriage took place under Sidratul Muntaha, the tree, the lotus tree in heaven, Allah declared his marriage and he married Sayyidati Nisa al Alameen, the best of the ladies. Can you compare those two? <laughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's satisfied for the satisfaction of Fatima and he's angry for the anger of Fatima. Can you compare those two? He says, Ahsanti ya hurra. Okay, I like that answer. What about Ibrahim? Now that's one, this one's tough because Ibrahim Khalil al-Rahman. She told him, as for Ibrahim, he asked Allah in the Holy Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى Show me how do you resurrect the dead. قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Allah told him, why you don't believe? He says, قَالَ بَلَا وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي I want my heart to have more certainty, so show it to me. Whereas Imam Ali, she says, Mawlai Amir al Mu'mineen, in a hadith that everyone recognizes, you and everyone you've heard of this, he said, Law kushifa If the veil were be to remove from me, meaning I could see the reality of the day of judgment and everything, the Imam says, My yaqeen would not increase a bit because I'm at the highest level of yaqeen. So she's telling him Imam Ali's yaqeen is greater than Prophet Ibrahim's yaqeen. So he has a virtue there. He says, Ahsanti. Yes, that's a good answer. What about Musa? How do you claim Imam Ali has a virtue over Musa? She tells him, Allah says in the Holy Quran about Musa, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَبُ We just talked about khawf. He left the city of the Pharaoh khaif. He was scared. Because they were pursuing him, they were trying to kill Musa. Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam on the night of the Mabit, when the Prophet asked him to sleep in his bed, Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ ابْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ And there are those people who are willing to sell their lives for the satisfaction of Allah. Look at these two. Musa is about to be killed, Allah says he was scared. Ali ibn Abi Talib is about to be killed, Allah says, I bought his soul from him. He's willing to sell himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which one's greater? He says, okay, I agree that <laughs> basically uh, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, has that virtue. Then she mentions, she mentions Dawood, she mentions Sulaiman and these other prophets. The hadith is very long, so it's truly fascinating how she was firm in the wulaya of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Very, very blessed family, Halima Sa'diyya. She had the honor of being the mother figure for the Prophet and to nurse the Prophet. And look at two of her daughters. One of them was the Shayma and the story. And one of them is uh, Al-Hurra, who had so much love for Imam Ali alayhi salam. Like Allah will choose something like the best for him to give him the akhlaq. Absolutely, absolutely. Inshallah we'll continue by examining the loyalty of the Prophet and mentioning some other examples.